When you first went to the ketogenic diet, your cholesterol was like above 500, right? It started, so I actually didn't describe what my diet was when you asked, so I'll get to that oh, in a minute. Okay. But, um, so we, yeah, my point was like, the, uh, that's that's the biggest concern I feel like with people that are ketogenic or on carnivore yeah. is that the, the cholesterol is through the roof and people don't want to die of heart disease. Right, so um, when I went low carb, before I went low carb, Mike, just for a baseline, my LDL cholesterol, that's what people call like the bad cholesterol. So when I when I talk now, I'm going to be talking about this LDL or LDLC primarily. Mm -hmm. It was 95, which is pretty normal. I went low carb, um, and on my first repeat test, my levels were well above 300. Now, I said I didn't describe my diet. I now want to describe it because when I started low carb, the way I did it was very low saturated fat like lots of vegetables and fish, very little red meat, because that's what I thought was healthy at the time. Very little butter. No, I didn't use butter at all. Olive oil. Uh, uh, lots of olive oil, avocado, olives, lots of leafy greens and fiber. And um, I designed it that way just because if I was going to try keto, that's what I thought was healthy at the time. Now, I want to emphasize that because despite that, my LDL levels more than tripled. So it wasn't like I was guzzling butter here. People like to try to boil it down to, oh, they're just eating a lot of saturated fat. That's a lazy explanation. And I'll repeat that. That's a lazy explanation. It doesn't describe the phenomena we're seeing um, on lo a lot of levels. Remind me to get back to why saturated fat is such a bad explanation. I can come up with a bunch of reasons. Okay. But the first reason is there's no suggestion in the literature that saturated fat can have this kind of impact on people in general. Like when saturated fat increases your LDL in the general population, it can have a little blip, mm -hmm. but it's not gonna increase your levels from 90 to over 300. The only thing that people think can make your LDL that high, 300, and then eventually mine ended up continuing to climb to the highest it's been my LDL, not total, my LDL was 545, which again, you show that to a doctor and they think one of two things, they think, this is a lab error and a fluke, or you have a terrible genetic condition and you probably should either start a medication or go coffin shopping. Those are your options. So um, that is, you know, now very clear that that is a, a event that happens for a lot of people that go on low carb where they have their LDL skyrocket mm. and um, then they you know, are stuck between a rock and a hard place because they love this lifestyle. It can often be very therapeutic. So for someone like me, I need it. Right. Um, but then their LDL goes through the roof. And how do you, you know, manage these things you know, clinically and as a patient? How do you walk the line between them? And what is actually the risk profile of this particular LDL rise? And we're gonna get into why it's unique, I'm sure, in a minute. But, um, um, the interesting thing about it, and I'm going to give a hat tip to my good friend and colleague, Dave Feldman. He noticed when this happened to him, this happened to him in 2015, and he was looking around and seeing who else it happened to. And he's like, huh, this is weird. The people who have this response who, there's a lot of them, but they're actually the minority. The people who have this response, let me ask you this. Would you think if we consider the LDL bad and high cholesterol bad, that the people who would see the LDL increases would be the healthy, lean people or the people with obesity and diabetes, the unhealthy people? What would you in just intuitively think? I would imagine it would be the unhealthy people. Right. Fat people. Right. We see the opposite. So what we see is actually the people with obesity and insulin resistance disorders, they don't have LDL increases. The people who have increases are the lean, healthy, athletic ones. So Dave observed this. This was back in 2017. We didn't have hard data. Um, he didn't have hard data. I wasn't even keto at the time. I was smashing cookies at the food court. Um, and um, he coined this term in 2017, lean mass hyperresponder, a term to, to distinguish these people who go low carb and see the increases in their LDL along with high HDL and low triglycerides. And we can also get into the mechanism behind it because it's really, really interesting. But... Um, he observed this and said, okay, but these people are usually lean, so we turn, turn them lean mass hyperresponders, hyperresponders to low carb where their you know, hyperresponse is the increase in cholesterol. So lean mass hyperresponders was the term. He put it out in a blog post, not a scientist or in these, in these, uh, at least not uh, trained in medicine. And the response was a lot of people coming forward and saying, hey, that's me. Hey, that's me. Hey, that's me. 
So he started a Facebook group. It now has over 11,000 members, and a community has arisen. It's very clear now that there's a population of people who are lean and healthy, who go low-carb, or lean and metabolically healthy. They might have inflammatory disorders, autoimmune disorders, neurological disorders, mental health disorders. But for whatever reason, they go low-carb, and their LDL then skyrockets. And then they're freaking out, or their doctors are freaking out. Anyway, um, fast forward a little bit. You know, I go low carb. This happens to me. And I join Dave when we start doing a little bit of research saying, okay, there's something here. Let's try to figure out what it is. Then our first paper was published near the end of 2021, early 2022 um, with a team at uh, Harvard in Mexico with some, my friend Adrian Sotomoda. He was a MD, PhD. He trained with me at Oxford. And then um, senior author on that first paper was uh, MD, PhD endocrinologist at Boston Children's in Harvard. And what we showed was actually, yeah, there are lean mass hyperresponders. There's a phenotype that exists. And as it happens, there is an inverse association between body mass index and LDL and low-carb diets, so, which means the leaner you are, the higher your LDL goes. So now go ahead. to interrupt you real quick, when it comes to BMI, is there a difference between body mass with fat or body mass with somebody who's really muscular and has a lot of muscle, yeah. muscle mass? So um, yes, what I'll say is our studies are limited in that BMI is typically what's collected. So we, for example, we did a meta-analysis of randomized control trials where you just analyze a bunch of trials that pre-exist. Mm -hmm. And people only collect like weight and height because it's easy, right? So okay. then you get a BMI. So if we're looking across these 41 trials, they just aren't getting DEXs on every people, which okay. goes at body comp. So we are limited by the tools that we have, but you're right. There's going to be a difference between someone who is, you know, their BMI is 28, but they're shredded. And then someone who's, you know, BMI is 28, but they're, you know, floppy. Right. Um, <laughs> an example, I mean, a good example would be Dom, right? He's a big guy. Huge. Yeah. But he had this response. Now he's right. BMI over 25, I presume. Yeah. But he has very little body fat. So Dom's a monster. Google uh, Google pictures of uh, type in Dom D'Agostino bodybuilding. Yeah. <laughs> this will so, be this will be fun. You can definitely have people who are over you know 25 BMI who have this response, uh, particularly if they have low body fat. There is an extra. Look at that one on the left, top left. Sorry to interrupt. No worries. Just want to yeah. give people some context for uh, Dom's dude. body mass. And an incredibly sweet man as well. Oh, Dom's the man. Yeah. Look so, at him. Yeah. No, it's a good question. I, I, my, I'd sum it as we're limited by the, the data we have. We have one study that came out by Cooper et al. where we did actually look at fat-free mass and did find an association. But right now we're using BMI as a proxy, which okay. on population levels, like you have a cohort of like 500 people, it's going to be decent. Right. Um, so it works for our purposes. But no, it's a good question. Um, but what we found in this first study was there was an inverse association between BMI and and LDL, basically the leaner you are, the higher your LDL goes in a dose response manner. Right. More lean, higher LDL. Okay. Leaner, higher LDL. Now, this initial study was limited in um, that in just the way the data was collected, but the, the research has evolved. So we've had multiple studies confirming this finding, and the most recent one confirming it was actually this meta of RCTs that I mentioned. Now, if you think about the hierarchy of scientific you know, investigation, at the bottom, you have things like case studies, and then you go up and you have randomized controlled trials, right? You take people and you randomize them to different groups. That's supposed to be the gold standard. But above that, you could say you have the meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials, where you take a bunch of randomized controlled trials and you group them, and you mm. analyze them as a group. So that's a very rigorous uh, study type. Now, we did this, and we published it in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, the first author, Sota Mota et al., and basically what we found was if you look at all the low-carb trials, low-carb defined as carbs under 130 grams, those – the only category, the only BMI category that had increases was uh, lean, under 25 BMI, did have an increase across the studies. All studies had an increase. In cholesterol. In LDL cholesterol. It was like 41.4. Across all of these meta trials. Across all, in, in, in lean people. But then if you analyze the ones in overweight or class one obesity, there was no increase. Then if you analyze it in class two obesity, there was a decrease. So, and then we looked across all of them. And again, there was an inverse. Cla wait, class two obesity, meaning very obese, their cholesterol went down. Their LDL went down, yes. Wow. So again, what we're saying is, it's the lean people 
that are at risk for the increased LDL. In fact, we also did an analysis in this study because we could have in individual participant level data of, oh, how does this compare to saturated fat? Mm. You know, what's what's the, the impact? So you can see even in the supplement, this analysis, and being even in the, the top quartile of saturated fat intake had negligible effect as compared to being lean. Being lean, just having a BMI under 25 was over five times as powerful as having top quartile saturated fat intake. So bottom line is the low BMI being lean in terms of factors that are explaining why people go, why people see increases in cholesterol and low carb, it's being lean and metabolically healthy. It's that's a risk factor, not eating a lot of saturated fat. And that seems counterintuitive and paradoxical. Mm -hmm. So the question is, why? Why would this occur? Um, and how can we test it? <laughs>